Hello everyone and welcome to our next lecture on arterial system of calotis. Now, arterial system of calotis, it consists of three main uh, branches of vessels which supply oxygenated blood to various parts of the body in, the, in case of calotis. So these three uh, main vessels are pulmonary arch, systemic arch and dorsal aorta. And here there is a complete diagram of arterial system in which various blood vessels are shown which are supplied to various parts of the uh, body. But for our convenience of understanding, we are going to study each and every part in detail. So now let us start with the first part of arterial system that means pulmonary arch. Now look in the diagram, the pulmonary arch, this one here is the pulmonary arch, which is shown arising from cavum pulmonal of the ventricle. This part of the ventricle, which is right part of the ventricle, that is cavum pulmonal. And from this part, this dark broad uh, vessel, which is uh, starting this dark, dark in color, this one. So this is the pulmonary arch. This pulmonary arch, which arises from uh, cavum pulmonal, and further, when it runs upward, it divides into these two branches: right pulmonary artery and left pulmonary artery, which carry the deoxygenated blood to lungs. So these pulmonary arteries, right and left pulmonary arteries, they carry deoxygenated blood to the lungs. So understood? This is first part: pulmonary arch then second part of uh, arterial system that means systemic arch so here in this diagram also again systemic arch is shown so systemic arch there are two systemic arches one is right systemic arch and second one is left systemic arch now here look at this this is right systemic and here is the left systemic arch okay. so <clears throat> these two arches they arise from the heart, the right systemic arch and the left systemic arch. These are the two branches of systemic uh, arches. The right systemic arch arise from left side of the ventricle and carry pure blood. Right systemic arch, it carry pure blood because ventricle, it contain left side of the ventricle, which contain or which you can say cavum dorsal, cavum dorsal that cavum dorsal, this side of the heart, here, cavum dorsal, and this cavum dorsal contain pure blood, oxygenated blood. So this right systemic arch arises from cavum dorsal and carry pure blood. But the left systemic arch arises from a somewhat right to the ventricle, but that means towards the cavum pulmonal, and it carry <coughs> the mixed blood. It carry mixed blood. Now both the arches, both the systemic arches cross each other. They cross each other in front of auricles. They cross each other in front of auricle and then pass downward. So here you can see there is crossing of both the arches. This one, these two arches in front of article, uh, auricles, they cross each other and then they pass downward. When they pass downward, this one, right systemic, and this one is the left systemic. When they pass downward, then below the heart, they fuse together to form a dorsal aorta. So this is the part of then dorsal aorta. Okay. The systemic arches, this systemic arch, it gives some branches, right side of the systemic arch and left side of the systemic arch. There are numerous branches which arise from this systemic arch and they are supplied to various organs. Now let us in detail uh, look about all the branches. So the systemic arch gives uh, four main branches to various parts. No, one by one we are going to uh, discuss. First one is the common carotid artery which is called innominate artery. No common carotid. Look at the label common carotid artery or which is innominate artery. This one is a common carotid artery. This arises from right systemic arch. This is the right systemic arch. 
and from this right systemic arch here arise the common carotid this one is the common carotid artery okay each common carotid artery then divide into one internal and one external carotid artery this internal and external carotid artery supply blood to various region of the heart okay so this is external carotid and here you can say internal carotid this is one innominate so each carotid artery right and left carotid artery there are two that means you can say the common carotid then divide into two branches right and left carotid and each carotid then again divide into two branches internal carotid and external carotid this is internal this one is a external and these carotid artery generally supply blood to the head region now internal carotid this one each is connected to systemic arch so this is connected to systemic arch through a small artery here called as ductus carotidus okay so this internal carotid is connected to this side of the systemic arch by this ductus carotidus so likewise in this side also you can say this one is the internal carotid so this internal carotid is connected to this systemic arch through this ductus carotidus okay but before dividing before dividing into internal and external carotid artery this one each carotid artery here this right and left carotid artery before dividing to this internal and external and before dividing this side on to internal and external but before dividing this each right and left carotid artery it gives one branch called as thyroid artery this one is the thyroidal artery on this side this is the thyroid so you can say this is left thyroidal and this one is the right thyroidal okay understood again one time more we are discussing systemic arch and systemic arch has two branches right systemic arch and left systemic arch okay right systemic arch carry pure blood okay and left systemic arch carry mixed blood understood then right systemic arch it gives off common carotid artery understood this one is the common carotid artery that means right systemic arch gives off the common carotid artery this common carotid artery is then divided into right and left carotid arteries okay then each right and left carotid artery further divided into two branches external carotid and internal carotid okay but before dividing into external and internal carotid each right and left carotid artery it gives off a branch called as thyroidal artery and then each internal carotid this one is internal carotid of this side this one is internal carotid of this side so each internal carotid it is connected to systemic arch of its side with a small branch called as ductus carotidus understood up to this much okay then each internal carotid artery then gives off thyroidal artery that we have already seen now each internal carotid then bifurcates here it bifurcates into two branches one is palatine and second one is stapedial so it bifurcates into two branches palatine and stapedial the internal carotid that means this palatine and stapedial they supply blood to the brain region okay then external carotid so each external carotid also gives off three branches it gives off three branches one is for, this one is laryngotracheal first one laryngotracheal this one this one is buccal and third one laryngotracheal and this three buccal arteries this one buccal 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 that means this laryngotracheal and then these buccal arteries okay so three buccal arteries then second part that is now this is regarding the uh, you can say 
systemic arches these systemic arches right and left systemic are they round downward and fuse together to form the dorsal aorta but before forming dorsal aorta the <coughs> systemic arches it has a you can say branch coming from common subclavian so subclavian the common subclavian artery arises from right systemic arch it arises from right systemic arch here and then it divides into two branches like this okay then it divides into two branches right and left branch okay and these branches supply to four limbs okay then another uh, you can say artery arising from this right systemic that is vertebral artery this supply blood to vertebral column and last part arising from this arches systemic arches that means this is the esophageal esophageal artery this one is esophageal artery which arise from both right and left systemic arch and supply to esophagus so this is regarding the systemic arches okay then dorsal aorta okay. so then dorsal aorta how the dorsal aorta supply to various organs okay now let us see the dorsal aorta so this is regarding dorsal aorta these are various uh, branches of dorsal aorta which are arising so this dorsal aorta as we know that it is formed by union of right systemic and left systemic arch when this right systemic and left systemic arch it carry blood downward so there runs mid dorsally and backwardly there runs the dorsal aorta this dorsal aorta it supplies various branches to various part of the body so to which part it supplies which branches let us see one by one so this one is the first branch this is esophageal branch so esophageal branch through this esophageal branch it supply blood to esophagus then seven pairs of this parietals parietal arteries seven pairs of parietal artery through this seven pairs of parietal arteries the dorsal aorta supply blood to the dorsal muscles of the body and vertebral column then four pairs of these gastric arteries this one four pairs of gastric arteries through these gastric arteries it supply blood to the wall of stomach then a single pair of uh, you can say then the single pair of uh, anterior mesenteric artery this one below uh, this parietal and gastric here is single pair of anterior mesenteric artery which supply blood to intestine then single pair of uh, sorry single uh, artery celiac artery which supply blood to stomach pancreas and spleen below that there is a posterior mesenteric artery now look we are uh, taking this sequentially from uh, you can say anterior part here this is esophageal artery then below esophageal there are parietal seven pairs of parietal then four pairs of gastric after that the single anterior mesenteric artery after that single celiac artery anterior mesenteric supplying to uh, small intestine and celiac artery supply to stomach pancreas and spleen then after that posterior mesenteric artery it supply blood to rectum so this is the posterior mesenteric artery and supply blood to the rectum after that there are genital arteries there is a pair of genital artery right and left genital artery which supply uh, blood to testes in case of male and ovaries in case of female after that here these are the renal arteries so three or more pairs of renal artery they supply blood to kidneys and after that this one is the iliac artery a pair of iliac artery supply blood to hind limb okay which is further divided into a pelvic and uh, then visceral artery okay or you can say common iliac then divided into external iliac and internal iliac 
okay but before dividing into external internal iliac it, it gives one branch that is pelvic artery then at the last the dorsal aorta and posteriorly into the common caudal artery which is supplied to tail region of the uh, calotis so this is regarding the uh, arterial system of calotis okay in the next lecture we will see venous system of calotis